Maybe you thought I forgot about it, or maybe you were hoping I forgot about it, but here's that section on router on a stick and following this some layer three switching that I promised you way back when, when we were doing layer two switching. I definitely wanted you to see a little bit of routing in action before we dove into these two topics. And with router on a stick, uh, two, I don't wanna say confessions, but two, uh, two pieces of radical honesty, I guess is a good way to put it. First, the first time I heard this term, I thought it was a joke. I had no idea that there was actually something called router on a stick you could do with Cisco. Uh, and you can, and we're going to talk about why you would do that for a few minutes and a couple of gotchas, and then we're going to configure one on the live equipment. The second bit of radical honesty here is that you're probably going to go a long time in your career and perhaps never use this particular skill because layer three switching is so commonplace today. Let's just put it this way. I'm not saying you'll never do it. I'm not saying it's unimportant. Uh, because obviously, and for the CSENT and CCNA exams, it's a skill you need to have. But I don't think you're going to see too many job descriptions that say, lead off with, must be able to configure a router on a stick. It's just not something you see as often anymore because layer 3 switching, again, it's so commonplace. And as you'll see, when we have an L3 switch, you don't need to do router on a stick. Having said all that, let's see how we're, do the, how we're going to tackle ROAS and why we do it to begin with. As you remember... From the switching section, we had hosts in one VLAN and on the same IP address space, and there was no problem with communication and sending pings around, but there was a problem when we put those hosts in different VLANs. And that's what we're going to start this particular lab with. I do have the same diagram, I believe, three times on the whiteboard here, because we're going to keep referring back to VLAN numbers and IP addresses, because that's the value or those are the values, I should say, that you really need to keep an eye on when you're configuring router on a stick. So you might want to write these down as well. This particular network, we've got a host 2 at 172.12.2.2 that has already put in, been put in VLAN 2, and I'm sure you see the pattern there, as well as with host 4, which is in 172.12.4.4 and in VLAN 4. Now, we are using Cisco routers for those two hosts, but the one router we're really working with here is router 6. That's the router that's actually going to be doing the router on a sticking, if you will. And we've got something called a sub-interface here, or two sub-interfaces, actually. And those two sub-interfaces on router 6 are going to bear the IP addresses 172.12.4.6 and 172.12.2.6. All a sub-interface is is a logical division of a physical interface. That's it. Don't let anybody make it any more complicated for you than that because it's not. All we're doing is taking a physical address and logically dividing it into sub-interfaces. Now, this configuration, you know, it's got a lot in common with network address translation. Not in what it does, but in the fact that you can configure this and once you've got it up and running, you could go months without ever touching it. You could go years without ever touching it. And it's going to work just fine. But you know there are some details we need to watch to get it up and running in the first place, just like with NAT. And that's exactly what we're going to focus on in these videos. Here is that network, by the way. And here's the physical setup. Host 2 and host 4 are connected to our one switch at the FAST2 and FAST4 ports. And router 6 is going to be found off FAST 06, and you see the sub-interfaces that I mentioned there earlier. A couple of important details here to take note of. The switch ports connected to the hosts are access ports. Access ports belong to one VLAN and one VLAN only. Now the switch port connected to the router has to be trunking. We'd expect that because traffic's got to go back and forth there. And the trunking protocol ISL or .1Q must be the same as that used by the router. We would expect that as well. What you might not expect is this next point. Because a lot of times we're happy to just let our trunks negotiate or auto-negotiate and just leave them maybe a dynamic desirable and just say, okay, you know, just keep attempting to trunk. We talked about that in the switching section. But you can't leave it at dynamic or auto or anything else for this port leading to the Cisco router except unconditional trunking. Because Cisco routers don't negotiate that because Cisco routers aren't really built to negotiate trunking. That's what switches are for. 
Also, the router has to use a minimum of a fast Ethernet port for router on a stick. You can't do it with a regular Ethernet port. The deal is you can subdivide an Ethernet interface into subinterfaces, but you're not going to be able to use the encapsulation command on them. You have to have fast Ethernet or faster. And when I go over the rest of the screen, which I'm going to do now, and we go over the diagram, if this is the first time you've watched the video, I know some of these details might bounce off you a little bit. That's fine because you're going to see them all in action here shortly. But I want to mention them on paper first. The fast Ethernet porter that we're using in this lab, it's going to be using sub-interfaces. I've already mentioned that a couple of times. And we're going to use two commands on each sub-interface. One is the encapsulation command. And that has to match the NCAP type set on the connecting switch's trunk port. Makes perfect sense. It's also going to have an appropriate IP address for the VLAN indicated by the encapsulation command. That sounds real pretty, you know, in text, right? But it's like, what exactly is an appropriate IP address? Well, the IP address has to come from the address space of the VLAN we indicate with the encapsulation command. So let me bring that diagram back up. And the first sub-interface that I'm configuring here, uh, it's got to have an IP address from VLAN 2. And we know that that address space, looking at this, is 172.12.20/24. Now, do I have to end it with 6 to match the router number? No. Do I have to call this fast Ethernet port 0.0.2 because it's in VLAN 2? No. I could call that whatever I wanted. That doesn't have to match, but it's an excellent organizational tool. I would get used to doing that. And again, with fast O slash 0.4, that sub-interface, where am I getting this IP address from? Well, I'm looking at the IP address space of VLAN 4, and it's 172.12.4.0 slash 24. So I've got to give it an IP address that is on that particular subnet. And again, did I have to make it dot .6 to match router 6? No, I didn't. But it's just an excellent organizational tool. So make sure you have the right VLAN associated with the appropriate IP addresses on the router subinterfaces. I'm going to give you a kind of a gotcha video or a troubleshooting video here at the end of this section pointing out common router on a stick misconfigurations, and I know that one's going to be in there. But again, this is the entire configuration. There, there's really nothing tricky here at all. You've just got to watch your address spaces and make sure you don't get your VLANs mixed up. And again, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Let's go to the live equipment right now, actually, because we're going to do a little bit of checking before we start the labs. Let's go over here. We're on router 6, and right now, as you'll be able to see, I have no configuration on that particular interface at all. Fast Ethernet 00 is the interface we're going to be working with on router 6. It looks a little odd at first to see no IP address because you're going to see this even after we create the sub-interfaces. But as a rule, when you create sub-interfaces on a router interface, it's going to be the sub-interfaces that actually have IP addresses and not the actual physical interface. Let's go over to router 2. It's always a good idea to check this stuff before you start a lab. And this is the only configuration I've done besides the usual lab commands. We've got the IP addresses right there. We'll go over to router 4. Same deal you can see right here, 172.12.4.4. Now what I do want to check before we start the lab definitely is hopping over to the switch. Because you definitely want to check what here. What should I check before I start this lab? I should check my trunk, obviously, make sure that's up and working. And I should also check my VLANs. This is the kind of thing some people skip, not at first if they're working on a home lab or a rental lab or GNS3 or whatever you're working with. But what they do skip, they skip this after a while. It's like, well, I've got that foundation already there. I don't have to look at that again. Take 30 seconds to look at it. Save you a lot of unnecessary troubleshooting. Here's the command I wanted to show you very quickly on Ethernet 06 to unconditionally trunk. It's just switch port mode trunk. And then to set the encapsulation to .1Q, it's simply switch port trunk encap.1Q. 
Let's look at show VLAN brief and you can see we've got a lot of ports in VLAN 1, our default VLAN, but I've already put port 2 into VLAN 2 and port 4 into VLAN 4. And you'll also note up here that it skips from 5 to 7. So we know that interface 6 on here, FAST06, is our trunk port. So what command should I run to see that? Sorry about the disconnect warnings there. Show interface trunk. And you can see right here there's a big difference between port 6 and the other ports that are trunking. And those are running ISL, of course, but they're also set to auto. You want to set your trunk port for router and on a stick to on. That's a very important detail. So it looks like everything is up and running and exactly where it ought to be. We've got the lab set up. We know why we're doing what we're doing. And when we come back to the next video, we'll dive right into that live config on router 6 and get router on a stick up and running. I'll see you there.